The classic push-up is the gold standard bodyweight method for developing your chest, but it actually is not completely perfect. The ground is always gonna prevent you from really maximizing your range of motion and getting an awesome stretch on your chest. That's where the deficit push-up comes in. Now the deficit push-up is still going to work the same basic muscles that we're hitting on any of our class of push-ups and their variations. That means we're going to get our chest, our tries, our shoulders, and in addition to those muscle groups, your abs and your glutes and your entire core wind up having to fire for the duration of your set. So you're going to get a lot of total body bang for your buck here, and of course we're going to really develop our chest. The change up with the deficit push-up is we're going to get to get a really good stretch on our chest. We're going to push our limits a little bit. We want to do that very carefully though. If we do that carefully and if we understand how to do it, we're going to get a little bit of back benefit out of this move too, because we're going to get to really think about squeezing our shoulder blades. That means our rhomboids are going to come into play. Our rotator cuff muscles are going to come into play. We get a little bit of extra benefit from the deficit push-up. This is not a push-up that everybody needs to do. Start by mastering the basic push-up, then move on to decline push-ups and incline push-ups and work those variations. This is a change-up push-up. I consider it an exploratory push-up. It's a good way to challenge your range of motion. It's a good way to push the bounds of your shoulder mobility a little bit. And again, we're gonna get that great mid-back benefit and that great mid-back squeeze. So this is kind of a finisher that we're gonna hit for a little bit of lower reps. You don't have to do it, but it's a fun way to change things up. Now, how do we do the deficit push-up? It is very simple in that we wanna create a deficit. You can use anything to create that deficit from kettlebells to dumbbells to stacks of plates. I'm gonna use these two yoga blocks. The one thing you want to understand, we're just using these two yoga blocks, so you don't necessarily need a massive deficit. In fact, less is more. We've only got a couple inches here. Basically, all we're gonna do, we're gonna set up in our standard push-up position, my hands are on the blocks. I'm thinking about my shoulders directly above my hands. My hands are slightly wider. My glutes and abs are squeezed, and this is our starting position. Then we're just gonna basically get into push-up position. All we're gonna do is we're gonna lower down. Now the key here is if you have a deficit, you've gotta use it. So if I'm doing a standard push-up, I'm probably stopping about here before I've gone deeper than my deficit. Here I wanna push deeper than my deficit getting my chest to within about an inch of the ground while still keeping my abs and my glutes tight. In order to get to that depth, what I'm doing is not simply relaxing my way down and losing shoulder stability. In order to get this far down, I wanna be as active as possible. So I'm gonna think about actually squeezing my shoulder blades. Those tighter I squeeze my shoulder blades, that's going to drop my chest lower to the ground, and that's how I'm going to utilize that deficit. From there, all we do, just like a standard push-up, I'm thinking about screwing my elbows tight to my body. I'm just gonna press up, and that's it. So again, with our deficit push-up, lower down, think about really squeezing your shoulder blades, think about actively trying to pinch a pencil between your shoulder blades, pause for a split second, and drive up. That is our deficit push-up. Again, you can use anything to create this deficit. Blocks, plates, dumbbells, kettlebells, anything that's getting you three, four, five inches above the ground is going to be sufficient. And all we want to do is make sure to maximize and use that deficit. Really thinking about squeezing our shoulder blades, really thinking about getting those mid-back muscles alive. It's a move that's going to wind up supporting your other push-up variations. It's going to support your bench presses because we really want our back involved. And it's going to teach good mechanics if you let it do that. The key to letting it do that is not letting this become some high rep move. You don't need to do three to four sets of 15, 20, 25 reps of this. Instead, I want you to take these slower and really focus on using the deficit, focus on squeezing your shoulder blades, take your time and start to understand your range of motion. You wanna follow all your good push-up mechanics in terms of squeezing your abs, squeezing your glutes, screwing your hands into the ground, keeping your elbows close to your torso, and then at the end, we're just adding that really, really active mid-back squeeze and trying to drive our chest to within an inch of the ground and really utilize that deficit. This is a great way to end a chest workout if you wanna get a little bit of stretch after you've gotten all that work with your standard bench presses, with push-ups, with flies. This is a great way to end your chest workout or it's a great move that you can throw into a body weight circuit if you just wanna mix things up. Not a required move, but it is a fun one and there is a ton of benefit 
for your chest in terms of building a little bit of chest and shoulder mobility and also getting that mid-back involved. So try it out and let's keep finding ways to grow our chest.